Hey guys, welcome back to another edition of Mac Break Studio. It's been a little while since I've done one of these and I'm excited for a new tip for you today. I'm gonna to show you how to adjust the volume of a music clip or a sound effects clip and it doesn't involve the use of any keyframes. Let's take a look. I have opened a project I recently worked on about taking the Apple Watch Ultra on my first dive. The clips that I've tagged in orange are my voiceover clips, and the clip tagged in green is of course the music. I want to duck the music whenever I'm speaking, then raise it again when I'm not. These gap clips will be my guide for where the changes need to occur. My first step before doing anything else is to set the volume for the music during my speaking sections. I'll select the clip, then use the Ctrl and minus key to reduce the volume. The waveform reacts to the change, but this is not helpful because I need to hear the music against my voice. I'll play back the music and tap the keys until I'm happy with the volume level for all the speaking sections. I'll check my dive computer against the watch. The computer reports a depth of 65 feet. One of the most popular methods for changing the volume over time is to use the range tool. Press R, then drag across the section you want to increase or decrease in volume. Now press Ctrl plus a number of times to raise the volume within the selection range. This method works great because four keyframes are automatically added at the range boundaries. However, Funnel Cut Pro places them too close together, making the volume change too abrupt. Minutes. My watch reports a depth. Of course, you can always drag on the outer keyframes to create a slower rate of change. The main problem I have with this method is that there are just too many clicks. And if you have a number of places where you need to raise the volume, you'll be doing a lot of copying and pasting of keyframes then tweaking their placement. I'll drag across the keyframes to select them, then right-click on one of them and choose Delete Keyframes. So now let me show you the two methods I use, then you can decide which one you prefer. From the View menu, make sure Clip Skimming is enabled. Then make sure Snapping is enabled. This next step is super important. Select the clip and press Command-G to create a connected storyline. Doing this will give your clip all the magnetic properties of the primary storyline, which includes the ability to create adjustable crossfades. Skim over the music until the skimmer snaps to the edit point between the first gap clip and the voiceover, then press Command B to split the clip. Now I'll rinse and repeat, skimming to each edit point and splitting the clip. Press Command Comma to open the Preferences window, then in the Editing tab, set your crossfade duration to whatever you prefer. I like the default, so I'll leave it set to one second. In the timeline, I'll drag over the music to select all the music chunks, then press Option T to create one second crossfades. With the Command key held down, I'll select all the clips under the sections I'm not speaking, then from the Modify menu choose Adjust Volume, Relative, and enter a value of 15, and press Return. As the name suggests, a relative volume change will be relative to the current volume of the clip. So if the volume is currently set at minus 30 dB, then the resulting volume of the selected clip will be minus 15 dB. I'll play that back. Once submerged, the dive app goes into action and starts tracking my current depth and bottom time. The water temperature is a warm 73 degrees. I'll check my dive computer against the watch. The computer reports a depth of 65 feet and a bottom time of seven minutes. My watch reports I now have a nice smooth volume change in the music between each speaking section. Even better, if I select the clips, then expand the audio, you can see that Funnel Cut Pro created one second overlaps, then placed fade in and outs where the overlaps occur. With the fades exposed, you can easily adjust their durations by dragging on the fade handles. You can even change the fade type by right-clicking and choosing one of the four options from the menu. Funnel Cut Pro always uses S-curve fades when creating crossfades because they produce the smoothest, most natural sounding fades, particularly with music. If you need to change the fade type on every clip, there's no way to do this with one command. You'll need to change each fade for the new type manually. If you need the ability to batch change the fade types, you'll need to use the method I'm about to show you. To remove all the fades, I'll select the clips, then go to the Modify menu and choose Adjust Audio Fades, Remove Fades. With the clip still selected in the connected storyline, 
press Command T to add a one second audio transition at each edit point. I now have the same effect as before, but this time the crossfades are actually transitions that create the change from one volume level to the next. If I select all the transitions, then open the inspector, I'll see a menu for both the fade in and fade out type. I'll set these both to linear. Now every crossfade is a linear transition. I'll play that back. The computer reports a depth of 65 feet and a bottom time of 7 minutes. My watch reports a depth of Because these crossfades are actually transitions, you can change how fast each fade occurs by dragging on the transition boundary. And if you need to change where the fade occurs, you can drag the transition in the middle and roll the edit point right or left. So using one of these methods, you now have a faster, more accurate, and ultimately more flexible way of creating volume changes on your music or sound effects. Let me know in the comments what you think. And thanks for watching. <laughs>